Well, 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 welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Robert Imbrielli here. So good to have you along. SPG News and Views. We got a great show planned for you today. Uh, you know that uh, we do news Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, we often have special guests. And today is no exception. We have the great Mark Atwood joining us. It's very late where he is, uh, but he's gracious enough to stay up and uh, pass his bedtime probably. And he's joining us today. And we're going to be talking a wide-ranging interview. Lewis and, and Mark have a fabulous relationship. And it's really kind of fun to see the, the banter and the, the kind of depth that they can get to uh, in their conversation. So let's get started on this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Sit back, be prepared to take some notes. Uh, two great, amazing guys ahead. Uh, but first of all, let me introduce you to my amazing co-host, Mr. Lewis Herms. How are you, my friend? Did you actually say that Mark and I have a good relationship? You have a good relation, great relationship. I've seen it in uh, person uh, in Anaheim. I remember. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good to go now. Oy vey. So, Ay, what are we going to do with you? I know. I know. <laughs> Let me introduce this gentleman. This gentleman. This gentleman is amazing. Is probably the first time he's ever been called that, right? He has created so much. He has an amazing uh, book of spiritual. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he's, oh, he's speechless. speechless. That's, that's good. good. So that's, so that's I, I can do the whole show, show myself. myself. Just Hello. Just no, no, just, just keep, keep it on mute. It's better that way. Okay. There you go. Yes, Mr. Herms, how are you? So, so good, good to have, to have you, you here, my friend. And, and guys, just, just so you know, he's such a trooper. trooper. I am, I am a pain in the ass. Everybody knows that. Mark and I were talking about doing a show, and I said, hey, can you come on live on my show? He's like, He's like, sure, what time? Well, turns out it's 10 p.m. Mark's time right now. So thank you for staying up past your bedtime, which we know is 6 o'clock. So, and it's an age thing. It's okay. You're a naughty boy. You also said, how drunk will you be? I Oh, I did. Okay, I wasn't going to go public. I said, are you sure you want to do it that late? What level of drunk will you be at that time? <laughs> totally sober. Yep, he said it's all good. I go fantastic. Just to prove it, look, there's a tea bag there. Look. Yeah, put it on your chin. Okay, so Mark, it's so great to have you here. <laughs> well, it's always good to be here. It's been a while, and usually I pop over to your show, but I think we've done two of mine in a row now. Uh, we are yes. simulcasting on Mark Atwood's right now on Rumble. So if you do not like me and Robert, just uh, click off of us and hop over to his channel. It's the same show. <laughs> I know. It is. <laughs> it was that's that's the trick. <laughs> it's was, totally different content. You'll only see Mark on there. <laughs> oh god, it's actually well. I've just gone over there to see if it's working. It's working. Well done. It's really good. Yeah, looking good. Looking good. So um, how are you, my friend? Well, you know, very busy. Unbelievably it's like this is harder than When I was working hard, yeah, <laughs> it's very full time. Um, I, there's not enough hours in the day, and uh, I'm focused on my kids being well, and I'm focused on learning. I'm learning so much. New, I'm still learning so much new stuff, and that's and also watching the craziness in the world, and also watching people falling out of each other and all that kind of nonsense and it's like you know but but then again it's just distractions to take us off the path and i just keep getting back up on the horse and moving forward and just trying to just trying to make a difference uh on a daily basis really so when, when you say distractions do you think these are intentional calculated distractions are they just demonic distractions what, what's your thought on that well, the, I mean, I said to somebody the other day that 2024, um, I, you know, my, my first sub stack of the year was about a, a really horrific demonic attack that I had that I was then told to write about, which I did. And it was really pornographic. It was horrible. But then hundreds of people came back and said, thank you so much for sharing that because I have had those, but I've been too ashamed to share it. And, and it's like kind of offloading all of that. But then there's been just so much information comes in as you know, doing this, this whatever it is we're, we're doing, you get all this kind of 
uh, spiritual information, political information, financial information. You just get so much stuff coming in that it's all uh, about discern. Which I hate. I hate coming out with the phrases that everybody else is using, but it literally is about discernment. So, is it deliberate that these things are going on? Well, there's a number of ways that you can answer that question. I think. In, in you know for me with the kind of spiritual and um psychic and energetic attacks it's absolutely deliberate and you know i did a talk in edinburgh a month ago and i was attacked while i was on stage even though i had a, a huge amount of light workers there but i was right in the middle of um one of the one of the darkest well one of the lightest places on the earth but also one of the most um what's the word uh taken over kind of places in the middle you know the home, the seat of the scottish rites yep and potentially jerusalem and which i think the egyptian it was just amazing we got turned away from Roslyn chapel for the second time which was mad because i literally walked up to the door. people said i literally walked up to the door and a guy came out and said sorry you can't come in we're closing early and i was like are you serious and then people said maybe you shouldn't have advertised the fact that you were going to Roslyn chapel on social media and i was like it doesn't make any difference what you put out on social media because they know when i say they i mean you know the, the, this is a spiritual war we are currently still locked in kind of a three-dimensional version of our true selves and we don't know as much about us as they do so they you know they knew i was going to be going there and i don't know why uh you know i still don't know exactly what's so bloody important about me that they have to stop me going there because it's the second time they've done that and it was a bugger because I took three days out to drive all the way up, enjoy Scotland because it's a beautiful, beautiful place, and then drive all the way back. Uh, but anyway, the talk was the talk was good, and that was that was a like a calling to go and do that because there's lots of things I've turned down recently. But the I'm getting to the question, Lewis. I'm sorry, I'm rambling because it's so late. The is it deliberate? Well, on a multi-dimensional level, yes, it is. Does it mean that the people that are doing these things know know what they're doing? No, not necessarily. I mean, there's an awful lot of entity possession and clearing and spells and hexes and stuff like that that I'm working through on a pretty much a daily basis, uh, not just for, on me, but also on our ventures, on my friends and family. And, you know, and that's become just part of normal life. It's, it's not something weird that you you talk about in hush tones i talk about it all the time i'm doing lots and lots of work in that area and i'm developing myself in that way as well because you know lots more information has come in to me about w what it is i'm supposed to be doing and and part of what i've been doing is, is i've been out i think and this is i think this is true for a lot of people that have stood up in the last four years uh, is that they have become not just useful to people that have been going through a difficult time in a spiritual war but also drawing the fire i mean i certainly think that's true about you as well drawing fire uh because we can take it and it's not actually that easy but it's also like i you know, i'm not saying all that because i want a medal or anything it's just but it's definitely deliberate but the short answer to your question is a lot of the people that are doing distracting things. And I mean, right from tops of governments down to truthers to even media people and stuff, they just don't know. They don't necessarily, they're not necessarily conscious of it. Right. It's still happening. I thought they'd all gone. <laughs> and a lot of them have, but there's still, it's a very desperate kind of clawing scenario that a lot of people are experiencing. And just by sharing these stories, some people will laugh at me and call me an idiot, but other people will go, yeah, that's been happening to me. Thank you for sharing it, which is why I still do share these stories because mm -hmm. I know so many people are going through this sort of thing. And it's not always what it seems either, because I think that what I keep coming back to in my morning coffee chats and things like that is, and, and in my own head is that it's a spiritual war. You're the only person in the room and everything that's happening around you is for you. So everything is for your own spiritual development. And uh, as I've said many times over the years, we've become tempered, like making us stronger and stronger and stronger. So we're at the point where we can face the truth, face who we are, and already start showing that we have a way of building systems outside of this entirely corrupt um, nonsense that we, we've all found ourselves growing up in over the last century or so. But... 
you know that not everything not everything's as it seems so when i this particular attack in january i have a good friend who's a very talented uh medium and um healer and she said oh they they let that happen i went they what she said, yeah they, they wanted that that because when that happened this artifact um started buzzing in a ship in another dimension and gave away its position so they went and they went and got it back for you because it belonged to you and that's like you can't make this stuff up <laughs> you know it two things i want to hit on that you talked about um you're right about these it's it's amazing i feel uncomfortable when i talk about spiritual attacks so on and so forth in in public i have these conversations in private and tell people how to deal with them so on and so forth and i do feel uncomfortable but i i would agree with you when it is mentioned i have so many people that resonate with that they're like oh my god i'm so glad you mentioned it this is what's happening to me so on and so forth and we all have our ways of of combating this you know i have my way which i think is very simplified and some people have some more sophisticated ways of doing this but the first thing i would say to stop a spiritual attack is you have to believe you and god together have the power oh yeah if, if you if you already understand that that's more than half the battle yeah and, and so um i think it's important that we do have these conversations now you mentioned something else about they being disruptive and they would be what we call the satanic cabal i guess right yeah just so, call them that let's just let's just give or, it or, the, or cunts as i prefer to call them yes the c word i i'm not allowed <laughs> i can't do it uh, <laughs> i can do it in your accent cunt and it's okay though it's okay yes yeah, okay with you <laughs> um so the reality though is there is a lot of disruption so we're living in it right now so you you've heard myself and you and i have talked about um it's very clear that we're not supposed to be on this gregorian calendar and the yeah gregorian, we've had that chat quite a few times yeah yeah and I, yeah it's it's that's that's wrong that's that's satan's work in in my opinion and there's a different type of calendar in fact robert and i are going to and you're certainly invited going to have have a uh a New Year's Eve truth of the thon on March 31st of, of this month, because that's New Year's is April 1st or close to it in our opinion. You did that last year, didn't, didn't we do that last year as well? No, we did that live last year yeah. um, in, in um, St. Pete, but now we're going to do it online and we're going to inv invite a bunch of people. So that's going to be a lot of fun, but the disruption is real and it's intentional. The reason why they mess with our calendar is so they mess with our minds and they can keep us off balance. So we're living that today, and let's give an example of that. Sunday in the United States, the time changed again. Oh, I know. I yeah. nearly missed the meeting because it was here. It did. That's why I there sent you, you a message earlier going, check the time, because it, it changes here in two weeks. So suddenly we go from it, eight it hours to seven hours and then back to eight hours in a three-week period. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Not, not good for Anglo-American relationships. No, it's but it's. It, I think it's intentionally be disruptive. So... Arizona stays still. Their time doesn't change, right? And I have a theory about that. I think there's some laid lines and there's some satanic activity there, big time, that the cabal, that's one of their strongholds. Maybe they're like, hey, we don't want to change the time because we, we're going to want, we want to live in this time. But then the whole United States changes around Arizona and then Europe takes weeks to change. It's it can only be intentional the way I look at it. And for oh, it totally, it's all intentional. Yep. I mean, just look at money. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest driver of our Anything. distraction Pretty you could ever right. possibly. It's it's everything, right? You know, how many, I mean, the crazy lives with people. Are, the great thing about the quarantine, the, the lockdowns and everything was that so many people went, oh, well, my life was crazy. I was getting up at, 5 a.m. driving for two hours or getting on a train like a sardine, which I did when I worked in London. I thought, no, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's insane. I mean, the fact that uh, all businesses start at the same time and finish at the same time. So you've got this rush at either end. Of, it's just not, it's all just nonsense. It is. It's, right? not, it's not who we are. It's not who we're supposed to be. It's not how we're supposed to live. Okay, listen to this segue. You just said London and it's all just nonsense. I'm going to screen share. This is from the UK. 
This is a bus stop sign. Hey, save cash. Oh my God. Save up to $30 per year on roast dinners. It all adds up. Help well, this is out. exactly what happened in China under communism. People had, were, had to eat. They did. They ended up eating their own children. But of course, we're talking about the industrialized satanic adrenochrome network that, that has been doing this for centuries. That's what we're talking right. about. And it, there it is. That's why it has in control. What's that? That's why it has in control. Now, I, I go that way, too. It's so blatant. Yeah. It's got to be the good guys because the the bad guys, I know they're desperate, but they they're a little bit more subtle than that. You know, yeah. All, although I don't know if it's bad guys or good guys that sent John Cena out on stage naked at the Oscars that, you know, that's a that's a uh, embarrassment ritual that they do with 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 all the actors that make it past a certain level. But could that have been a white hat thing where they're like, hey, John, okay. are you, we, you know, are you willing to do this because it's really going to help expose them? And he goes, sure, I'm in. Or could the. Because I, I kind of believe maybe there is parts of Hollywood that are still controlled by the bad guys, and they're like, "This is part of your ritual." What What are your thoughts on that? Well, I totally agree. It's all part of the rituals. I mean, they had John Cena in a dress and high heels mm -hmm. knocking around last year or the year before. Um, right. I've only ever seen him in one film, but anyway, he's. Uh, I look. You and me have had this chat. I personally think the White Hats are in control of everything. They have been for years, and. Um, the big problem is mass immigration going on. And I think on a spiritual level, if you can detach yourself from that, the, the, in that, in that way, um, the souls that are going through that are volunteered to do it as part of this process for ascension. And it's necessary to wake up and save a bigger number of people because their brainwashing and the frequency adjustment on the human race is so deep. Um, and it can't happen again you know and you cannot go you know how hard it is to wake people up just by right. telling yeah, them facts absolutely. they don't they just don't hear them yeah i well uh, i'm with you on on one thing for sure is i i believe the only way that we could have gone through this wake-up process and not backslid is to do it slowly the way we've done it well there, really you know i think it saved billion millions of billions if not billions of lives doing it this way yeah i think i think that is the only way to do it is is to do it slowly because we are such a selfish society right that we wouldn't give a damn about what's going to happen 10 or 20 years from now and we'll just but we would backslide right into it if somebody came in on a white horse trump comes in on his pegasus and saves everybody i don't think it would work it wouldn't no. stick no, so it wouldn't stick so I do agree with that. So my question to you, if you, because I've been to the border and I've seen the people crossing the border and, you know, interviewed hundreds of them right there. Uh -huh. My challenge with your perspective, and I totally get it from a soul level, right? Yeah. But my challenge with it, if that's the case, then should we just stop fighting? Because isn't part of the awakening us fighting for those that can't fight for themselves also? So that's the conundrum I have. Oh, no, it is a conundrum, but it's all there for you. That that's 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 what I keep getting. I mean, I can only tell you what I'm getting, and I, and I know it's not the most popular opinion. I mean, there was a really good tweet uh, by Martin Geddes I read a few hours ago. I want to find it for you. Um, he's tweeting a lot, so I'm having to scroll a lot. But he said something like, oh, "Let me find it. It's really worth waiting a minute if I can find it." Come on, Martin. You know Martin Geddes? He wrote the book on Q. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah he's a wonderful, wonderful Years man. ago, he and I emailed a couple times back and forth. No, he's a great guy. Um, he's oh, brilliant. He, no, he's absolutely, but he's a genius. Um, and it was a brilliant, brilliant tweet that sums it all up. Um, my phone decided to go off at the same time as I'm looking for this. It basically, he says something like, look, movie we got to go through and i i completely agree but and i agree with i i totally understand your viewpoint and respect it too but i i can just go on what i get and i'm yeah and of course. what i keep what i keep getting is what i've just said firstly um and secondly it's it's um 
it's just it's necessary you know we we, we were in such trouble as a planet of sleepwalking it, it, we, we, we literally we're, we've been a farm for monsters for centuries it, it's no longer yeah and yeah. You know, and and we're, we're you know I describe the human race as self slaughtering sheep. You know, and we and we just accept so many things, even down to simple stuff like you get arthritis when you're fifty. Oh, it's old age. No, it isn't. It's because you've been poisoned your entire life Thank with you. pesticides and genetically modified bread and fluoride in the water and toxins in the paint and wearing plastic shoes that disconnect you from the earth. And you know, just the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we are, we, you try telling that to somebody. I mean, this is one of the reasons why opening the healing sense has been such an educational experience for me because of the sheer levels of toxicity in people. And I'm not an untoxic person. As you know, I like a drink. I like a smoke. I've been doing that for years. I'm pretty toxic. But compared to a lot of people that I see walking in, I'm in unbelievably healthy because I'm doing all these other things to mitigate it and I'm learning all these other things like having clean structured water, having Celtic sea salt in that water so you don't dehydrate. Everybody's dehydrated. Everybody's magnesium deficient. Everybody's iodine deficient. These are all cheap, simple things. Go, you know, you can through, cure. Go through those again real slow. Let's let's do let's give a gift to everybody. What are a couple simple things that we can do daily? Well, firstly, make sure you're drinking clean water. Okay. Right? It's got, it's got to be clean, right? And that doesn't mean the water in the gas Not station. Not like your yeah. mouth. Not like my potty mouth, no. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got to be clean, and that means putting it through a carbon filter or use or distilling it. Okay. Okay. A water distiller is like eighty, a hundred bucks, right? It, it, I, you, I, I would say though, people, if you distill your water, you should remineralize it after. Well, that's what I'm coming to next. Okay. Don't cool. interrupt me. You asked me for a fucking list. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to be clean oh, yeah. first, but then you've got to remineralize it. But before you remineralize it, you want to bring it to life. So the way you bring water to life is you put you create a vortex. So you're recreating nature. And um, we've got um, we've we've sold loads of these machines, which have I can get one actually. I don't know if I've ever shown you, but it's got pyramids on the side. It's got magnets on the sides. It creates a magnetic field. It's got a copper coil inside. It was invented by this friend of mine called Harry Rhodes. They're about eighty quid as well, and it creates structured water. And structured living water is so simple and it has such a profound effect on your health and your blood immediately. It's mind blowing. And then you put it, we, I put it into a hydrogen machine and fill it full of hydrogen. The word dehydrated hydration comes from hydrogen, right? So you need more hydrogen in your water. And then you put, I put Celtic sea salt in. There's other, there's, there's products you can get. It's electrolytes. Uh, we're short in potassium, sodium, uh, magnesium, all these things we are all lacking in. The water I couldn't take him that far. He wasn't no. he wasn't he wasn't ready for that. Um but I was just talking to Laura Worley, which is which is a, a friend of my wife and I, and um we we're doing this prayer vigil uh every every day on my channel until April 30th, right? to get rid of any any anybody that may be under some form of demonic attack or mk ultra to prevent them from being activated but what's interesting is she said that we are in the big season right now and i thought it was october she says it's right now is the big demonic ritual season she says from about the beginning of march till the end of april uh is it they really poured it on strong in fact she sent me a calendar with all that crazy stuff in it but th this is what we're dealing with, and it's it is it is wacko. But you and I are are I, we have we have a very good relationship, and we we definitely agree on a lot. For example, I believe that there are things that you can touch and feel that can help us physically and spiritually. Yeah, and I think sometimes we go too far off the deep end with the woo woo stuff and it doesn't take care of business or or we're all the way in the allopathic world which you're 100 percent right and um i'll, I'll uh, explain what i think about that i mean for example some of my audience would go we are the med beds we are and we are right we have incredible healing ability but we're not there yet mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. people maybe 
if you're a Tibetan monk, you meditate for 30 years and you can turn into your own light body, which is, there's record, records of a million or 800,000 monks doing that over the last 100 years. That's possible. But when most people are not there yet. So one of the reasons why I opened my, our healing center here in the West, stand there and say, just say some prayers and uh, imagine that you're well and you'll be well. It, no, they need to see a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They need to see mm -hmm. some, you know, woo-woo, jiggery-poker. They need to see some interesting uh, supplements and things like that. They need to see the theater of a spinning machine that makes the water go round because these things then help to reverse the the brainwashing but it's not just brainwashing i think you hit upon something when you said it's part of the ritual mm -hmm. because i also think it's technology so all, all of these poisons that have been put into us the vision that i keep getting is that there's your there's a blood cell and it's packed with uh detritus which comes from the toxins which we've been consuming our entire lives you can't help it actually even if you're the cleanest living person in the world it doesn't matter where you live, you're breathing in the dust, micro nano sized dust particles from the tires on the cars. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't not breathe it in. That's why slapping is a very good technique to get rid of all of that stuff out of your body, yeah. um, which is another thing everybody should be doing. But it hurts. So it's not it's not a lot of fun, is it? But it's free. It's fun for me. And the guy that rediscovered it from China is currently <laughs> in, a, is in an Australian prison for telling people about it. But you do that for five minutes really hard and you're going to get rid of all this crap but you, then you create a clean vessel you get the right water and stuff coming this would solve most problems but people are so so toxic toxic i mean that's really what the word means is it's the toxicity that makes us sick mm -hmm. uh, which creates inflammation inflammation is the core of every single illness that there is i don't i think every disease it, it is totally made up really actually yeah that's why they can't diagnose things properly it's all a racket, it's all a scam, and it's all designed to keep your life short, your intelligence low, your obedience high, and your stupidity high. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the big talking point they get from what you just said is be a masochist and you'll be healthy. Well, yeah, I guess you would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. So, um, well, that's, this is this is an interesting segue, also. But I, let's talk a little bit more about your clinic. And here's why. Here's why I can. By the way, Mark has no idea I was asking about the the his his deal. But the reason why it fascinates me is Robert and I talk about this often. There's a lot of podcasters that just podcast, and then there's there's a, a few that are constantly doing something. And we're going to get into. I know you talked to Mark Sexton, and 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 you're involved in. In that movement there, which I want to talk about, and you do all of this extra work. When you and I talk, you, it's, you're always busy, and you're helping people and teaching people how to do business. It's awesome. But in addition, somehow you found the time to create what I call in a very affordable med center. I guess you would call it without the meds, a healing center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you have a fascinating business model. Can you explain that to people? Well, it just seems to me that, okay, so the, the, the whole thing was born out of frustration because I, kept, I keep meeting people and I kept meeting people over the last three years that would repeat the same mantras to me, such as the med beds are coming. I can't wait. I'm, wait, I'm just waiting for the med beds or the RV, the revaluation com uh, is coming next week. Next week, we're going to have billions, billions, and I'm going to build healing centers all across the world. And I look at them and going, have you ever run a business? Do you really think they're going to give you that much money to go? And I'm like, really? And what, and that's not the only things, but you know, I'm just using those two examples because for me, what those two things have done is create limited hangouts. And those limited hangouts are the most distracting things there have been during this waking up process. Mm -hmm. Because people have just sat back. It's the same as Donald Trump. If Donald Trump had actually, you know, although he did win, if he had actually won in 2020, it's the same problem. People would have sat on their asses going, oh, it's all sorted now. That's right. They would have been done. I agree. You've got to work for it. You have to work for it. Yeah. And, and I believe very strongly God wants us to stand up and wants us to show that we're worth saving. And, you know, so I, I looked around and I just went, Okay, we've got a, you know, there's a technology here right now called hyperbaric oxygen. I've seen what it does. I've met people whose lives have been saved and changed and everything else. How much do these things cost, right? And it, it turns out they were 
you know, about I don't know, eighteen, twenty thousand pounds each. And I've got a friend here, uh, Gary, and I went round to his house and we'd been talking about healing centers over the last few years. And I just said, Gary, let's just find a room, get two of these machines in and start healing people. And that's what we did. We just did it. But while while uh, we did it, we thought, well, we don't want to be in the system. So how do you how do you do that? And because of what we've been learning over the last four years, I mean, I've been learning about common laws for maybe 12, 14 years. And I, I first stepped the first time I properly stepped outside the matrix was when I refused to pay my TV license. I know that you, they, they make us pay in the UK and Ireland to be brainwashed. You have to have pay 200 pounds a year or something just to have a television in your house. So I, anyway, I refused to do this about uh, quite a long time ago. And I remember learning this phrase, which I, I might have said to you before, but I'll say it again because not everybody has heard it. Um, when the bailiff came to the house, firstly, you don't answer the question. I'm not Mr. Atwood. Thank you. I'm not representing that legal fiction that you believe that I'm representing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not falling for your bully boy tactics. And I'm going to film you on this phone and put it on YouTube later if you piss me off. And then I said... I, ref I refute your implied right of access to this property, please leave. And while I said it, yeah, I have told you this before because I remember your reaction two years ago, but I was shaking when I said it. And then the guy turned around and he walked off the property and I was like, oh, and this is all part of the little tiny beep boop moments throughout my life. Something useful to add to the conversation uh, because I've been shown all of these things. Uh, like that's this. debatable, by the way. Well, well, you know, it's in my opinion, <laughs> which you can argue with. <laughs> but, you know, I, I feel like I've been useful to some people, at least. And I, you know, it's like when I, back when I did stand-up comedy, I used to say, if I make one person in the room laugh, I've done well. Obviously, I haven't done well if only one person in the room laughed. <laughs> but, you know, if that's there were right. only two people in the room and one of them laughed, I was doing all right. But, um. Yeah, so I thought, well, <laughs> I did learn a bit about um, legal structures. I've been running companies for 35 years, and I was like, I think it's time now to set this up as a private members association, which is an unincorporated body, and then to put all of this into private trust, because that's exactly what the cabal and all their minions have been doing to be above the law inside the system, but not inside the system, while everybody else has just involuntarily consented to all their bullshit mandates aren't real rules aren't real laws are not real acts are called acts because they're acting you know none of this stuff is real so you, you know we've created this private members association and the other beautiful thing about that is you don't charge fees for what you're offering you you ask for donations and that means that nobody gets turned away so you know there, there are lots of people out there and i got this very very clear message from god about 40 jobs to keep their kids in clothes and food and these people are suffering right and you know we don't want to turn anybody away on the grounds of money so that worked perfectly with the donation based thing the private members association we're running a course on it starting next tuesday and tell, teaching other people how to do this i've just set up a new publishing company which is a private members association as well and i think most people should be doing this too because it's private you have the right to be a private individual you're not a citizen you uh, a citizen is an employee of a corporation that does not represent you so you know we, we did that and anyway long story short we've got 556 people so far all around the world that want to copy the model so we've spent the last three or four months trying to work out how do you create a licensing model for a brand that could be global that creates a network of decentralized and this is the key there is a top-down structure, but it's not a, a fascist structure. Mm -hmm. It's decentralized. So it's mm -hmm. independent private members associations, which are self-funded. And this is the key as well. They become self-funded locations where people can trade in the private, have meetings, heal themselves, and meet with like-minded individuals on a regular basis. Instead of standing in the park, you can come and stand in a building and then be part of that. And then that provides employment opportunities. And because I've got a background in digital marketing he says looking for his book but he can't find it um you know the reason why hyperbaric oxygen is so interesting is because one the technology is 370 years old it was invented by a british physicist years ago they couldn't quite get rid of it when they brought in the flesh the flesh and the report and the rockefellers took over medicine 120 years ago so it's not something they can argue with because it does work and it works very well in helping the body heal itself and that's the key to it <laughs> because of that and um because of these people i can't i've lost my way now where was i because i was looking at my own hand 
<laughs> well, you, you said you you yeah you're mainly so decentralized self funding. Yeah, right. so so there's a million people a month on Google looking for hyperbaric oxygen therapy worldwide. So hello, there's demand straight away. And, the, and the, the, the interesting thing about all these new healing modalities, some of which we've talked about in private that I don't fully um, want to get involved with is, is that nobody's looking for them, right? There is, there is no demand for them because nobody knows about them apart from when they go on shows like ours and get a spike in demand because, Oh, because there's a lot of people watch our shows who are like, I want to learn new stuff. I want to learn about healing and blah, blah, blah. And then they go along, big spike in demand. But then how is that a sustainable business model? Because the thing is, so many people over the last four years have said, look, where we're going, there's no money. Where we're going, we can heal ourselves. Where we're going, we won't even need to eat. Where we're going, we can levitate. Where we're going, we'll all be psychic. I know, but we're not there yet. So we are the bridge. We have to create this bridge between the two worlds, which means you've got to have cash coming in to sustain whatever venture it is that you're going forward with. And if you are working as a volunteer for some big idea, I'm, I support you 100%, but it's unsustainable because if you run out of money, you've still got to pay the bills. You can't just donate your time forever. You know, and we need physical locations. And the other thing about it is that if we, the, we've got three or four of these very close to opening up in the next few months um, in the UK, Canada and the US. And um, I'm going to be going to every single opening. I mean, hopefully we'll have a couple of hundred within a couple of years because I'm going forward as if we are still here and we've still got to deal with what's in front of us today. Mm -hmm. If the RV happens, if the EBS happens, if the, if the XRP goes to 50, 500 grand, whatever, if that all that happens, great, we can just stop doing what we're doing. But for now, I, th I feel very strongly that we need to be learning as much as we possibly can about how to take care of us, ourselves and becoming sovereign in every single way, which means sovereign, which means responsible for your own thoughts, for your own feelings, for your own wealth, for your own um, spiritual development, for everything, you know, as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And I think that these healing centers and that model, because we're not doing it to make money because we, me and Gary don't need to have a business with all the ball out that that entails. We literally want to heal people right, and, right. and it's working really, really well. We've got a red light bed coming from the States. It's on its way. We've got, um, yeah, we we'll do these organite blankets. I've got, um, I was talking to somebody today about building a, um, an organic accumulator. That's like a, like a tent. I mean, it's great. It's exciting as well. It's like mm -hmm. basic, simple, a lot of this technology is, I mean, oxygen's oxygen. That's not tech. That's God's technology. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, you know, all these things are actually really, really, um profoundly effective if and available if we do it the right way right well you also you mentioned these people are are, are waiting they're waiting for the med bed or they're waiting for this special healing or this special spiritual awakening or god to come save us all right but god helps those who helps themselves if if you're just if you're sitting back and just waiting and waiting and waiting that's kind of a selfish behavior. And I would also say, liken it to the story where a person is drowning and, so, and, and a boat came up to help them. And they said, no, I'm good. God, God's going to save me. Right. And then, then another boat and then, then a raft and then a helicopter. And then, no, 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 no. And then they drowned. Right. And they went up. God, I thought you were going to save me. Like, well, I sent you a boat. I sent you a raft. <laughs> I sent you a surfboard and, and a helicopter. What What do you think's going on here? People need to take accountability, and they can't wait for this, this beautiful golden light just for things to happen. And one of the challenges, I think, is with that is – when they have that belief system, by the way, I believe it also. I believe there's going to be an amazing ascension of sorts, right? So I do believe that, but I believe we need to work towards that. And I'm unwilling to wait, wait for that. And I do believe that the people that have been waiting for Nassar Jassar and waiting for this and wait, waiting for that also get burnt out. And then they yeah. just get, then they just give up. They're like, oh, it never happened. Now we're disenchanted. Well, if you take, accountability and you're proactive in your own results guess what it doesn't matter if it comes in five years or ten years because you're already moving forward and that's what true sovereignty is sovereignty yeah. isn't waiting for 
God to change everything. So sovereignty is putting it in your own hands and taking accountability for it yourself. Hundred percent. Yeah, we're on the same page with that. I mean, so, this is this is why I did the truth tour with you because I was like, all right, he's doing something. There he is. He's doing something. We're out and about. Let's go and meet the people, and you know, prove that we're real and meet them and see that they're real. This is so important. You know. Well, speaking of accountability. I'm 124 years old, but when I do this, I look only 80. So that's pretty amazing. Folks, this is called Numi skin. Right? Now, Numi, Numi is cool. I've got it. I've got it. I've had it since America. It's brilliant. Yeah. Numi. I mean, look, by the way, I, for everybody watching, when Lewis sprang me a couple of months ago, he says, Is that your own hair? That's right. I was like, Yes, yeah, totally. Look. Lots of <laughs> hair. Lots of hair. Lots of hair. And my hair changed colors for some reason, used to be a lot lighter. But Numi Skin, guys, it's glutathione. What's glutathione? Glutathione is the most powerful antioxidant on the work and on the world. And it literally does what Mark is saying. So if, if you if you can't get in to one of his healing centers, because you're not nearby them yet, what an amazing product is you swish Numi in your mouth. And what it does is it assimilates the glutathione to your body in a way it back bypasses all the things that normally destroy glutathione. But all it really does, I mean, if we're just going to break it down, it lets your body do the work, which, as Mark pointed out, that's what God's gift was to us. We have a perfect body that makes the great decisions if it's operating at the highest level. So the glutathione talks to your mitochondria, your whole immune system, and that's how it gets to work. So, guys... Get your new me skin, get your new me regular. And for the ladies, they also have new me hers, which is I'm hearing great results about it um, in regards to hot flashes, PMS, menopause, all this stuff. And so it's it's so good. I even named it hers for him because the guys are very happy when the women are taking hers. If you know what I mean. God, you're get, you getting cheesier as you go. <laughs> hey there. Hi hey, there. Ho there. Hey, Grecian 2000 work for me. Um <laughs> So folks, just no, go. look. No, new me. I'm a. I've, I've put a link for that below. It's great. It is so easy. And these are the kind of things that I've been trying to get my mum to do. You know, because I every everything that I recommend or talk about, I've got. I use. We actually have a load of the Nutri Swish in the healing center here, and um, I give free samples away to people. Go and try it. Just try it. See what it's like. See what a difference it makes. And it's it, it, you know when people are really really healthy. They might not notice the difference, but if you've got anything wrong, the difference is profound, absolutely profound. And so, yeah, I, I highly endorse that too. And there's a link below on, I'm assuming on Mark's description, there's one below on our description, on any channel or simulcasting on, there's a, there's a link below. So enough about my shameless promotions. Um, well, no, it's good. And also, you know, Numi's one, of, I've been championing MLMs for four years because that's a sovereign business model that the cabal didn't like because they don't give their money to Google and to the newspapers and to the TV stations. They pay people to recommend their products. So they right. created a load of shit ones, called them pyramid schemes to put you all off them. That's but right. actually, you know, you're recommending products to your friends and family all the time and not getting paid. So, you know, you can buy the stuff, but you can also promote it and earn a living and get rid of your J-O-B. Get rid of the J-O-B. So yeah. here's something interesting happened when you were talking about a minute ago, and I don't know if anybody recognized it. I had a major spiritual attack. Oh, uh, well, I'm not surprised. I don't have tinnitus, but I had a serious ringing in my left ear. I mean, just blasting in my left ear. And I ended up reading about it, and that's a spiritual attack. So what happens when I get these, because I often get weird, different type of stuffs that happens um, I have I've had this thing with blurred vision that happens right when I'm right before I'm about ready to drive, right? But here's what I do, and it's been very very effective. And this is what this is what I just did. Nobody knows, so I'm just going to give you an insight. Like I said, mine's very simple. When it was happening, I go, God, get rid of this. You've got this. And you probably didn't even see me put my hands out like that. I go, you got this, and it's gone. Because I believe God through us, we have all the power to work on this stuff. We just and the spiritual gurus. I'm not one. Of, I don't want it. You don't need a guru. You're the guru. You watching this? You're the guru that you're looking for. We've got to get rid of all of. I mean, look, Oprah bloody Winfrey and Deepak Chopra. I was buying their meditations ten years ago, like an idiot, but I didn't know any better. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I feel a bit stupid talking about it sometimes. But the thing is, when I started doing my podcast, I started talking about demonic possession. And I, and I was like, well, you know, I did that joke every day, 17 times around America. I couldn't believe that I did it. But then I got all these emails. And then uh, that's what sustained me is the amazing people that have um, come along this journey. I just want to answer MAGA nurse. Thank you for your, uh, hello, I'm a nurse in Michigan, very interested in your business model. If you're interested in the healing center, go to live, L-I-V, 5D health.com. And um, there's an email address in there. There was a franchise opportunity page, but we're not calling it a franchise anymore because that's a, that's a dodgy word in America. So we're changing the name of it. It's but we have dodgy. A it's a little bit dodgy, yeah, because there's different, you've got all those 50 different bloody rules for what franchises are. So it's more of a kind of, we could, that's the other thing. We've had to rewrite that whole kind of business model and rewrite the contracts because this is a 5D business, but we're still in the 3D. So we've, we've had to come up with something that merges the two things together. It's, it's, very, it's a very interesting um, uh, process. But yes, if you're in live5dhealth.com is the website for that. And um, I'm sure you'll be able to get a hold of us somehow if you are interested. Very, although very don't true. don't ring me because i haven't got time to speak to anybody <laughs> I, i'm i'm too big i got another name to handle you <laughs> <laughs> i still try to answer everybody but it's like i was rude to somebody on the, my telegram group today because they were going on why do you keep going on about this that and the other I was like, it's my fucking house if you don't like it but they're off and then I, afterwards i was like i didn't need to say that really <laughs> <laughs> but well, you know people tap away at you they peck your head Oh, it's true. So here, here's a full disclosure. I have three email addresses, right? One is public, screwbiggov at protonmail.com, if somebody wants to reach me. But I have I have it filtered because I, I need other people to look at that. I can't get to it. Then I have an old... Hang on, let me guess. Californian deal for Gmail. Yes, it is. Yeah, that one. Yes, yeah. of course. Um, so... <laughs> Then I also have, I do have, I have an old Gmail account that is uh, spam central. So anything I think I might get spammed, that's what I put in to these websites. And then I have my, my main account, right? Right now, and this is why this is a public apology. I've got, now remember, I don't get spam in this. So this is all legit stuff. I have 1,582 unread emails. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got 50,000. But yeah. not spam. So you can't count spam in there. These are legit. So yeah, yeah. I now just brought somebody on to go through and filter those. But there's a section in there that Lewis must read, must read, must read. So, guys, if you if if somehow I'm going to get back to you, I guarantee it. If it's a month late, I apologize. But I'm working on it. So now I have two emails that people are helping me filter through so I can get it makes it easier for me to hone on in on the important ones and so on and so forth so um it's tough out there now you have a somebody has asked a question that you and i wanted to talk about anyways right so and i'm going to get to it it says mark your thoughts on mark sexton's crime report will they do anything or will the military have to stand in well i think the military are already running everything uh, no, mark, wait, sexton. mark i'm sorry can, can you real quick summarize for the people yeah. that don't know what, yeah. what what they're talking about Okay, so mark homicide, etc., um, as a crime and report it properly in in the channels that he understands as an ex policeman, and I think he's played an extremely important role for and, and an inspiration for people across the world in this respect. Because in many ways, if you are supporting Donald Trump and you can see the way that the whether you if you believe this and I, I do, the the White Hats have been doing everything by the book and legally in order to achieve the ultimate objective, which is getting rid of all these cocksuckers. Um, and I think Mark's been doing that really, really well. Now he's, he's made two or three attempts with, and he's gathered evidence. He's gathered expert witnesses, irrefutable evidence. And when you uh, present, uh, make, make accusations like that, you need to do it properly. And he has done it absolutely 110% properly. And he's got a crime number. And when you get a crime number that's official and the police are supposed to, according to our understanding of what the police are supposed to do, which is work for the people. We know they don't now. They actually work for corporations, for profit corporations. But I think even most of the policemen 
or police people in the service don't even know that. Um, and then what happened is that last week, yeah, I've got a Twitter channel um, or an x.com forward slash Mark Atwood channel, which I've been using a lot in the last year. And I got one of those blue ticks where you could upload longer videos. That's the only reason I got it. And I've got loads of people imitating me. So it's the easiest way of getting rid of that problem. And Mark's asked me, asked me to upload a few long videos for him. And we did one. I can't remember when it was about a month ago. It's had nearly a million views, which was him just reading out the the contract between uh, Pfizer and the South African government, which proves that the goal, the governments of the world are completely complicit in, uh, in this crime. And then he put together this he, on, I think it was last, what day is it now? It was about a week ago on Friday, he went into the police station and filmed himself doing it and handed it in and all recorded beautiful. But then he got a phone call two days later. So I think this is what they're re referring to. He got a phone call two days later on a Sunday morning where what had obviously happened was the, the, the higher up policeman would push this 22 year old policeman onto the phone and say, just ring him up and see what this is about. We don't want to go anywhere near this. And he recorded all of that and I put it up as well. Um, is that getting anywhere? Well, I think it's important that this kind of thing happens, whether it gets us anywhere or not. I think it I think on a consciousness level, all of these things help. It's the answer that I would give to somebody who said, what's the point in picking up a piece of litter when there's all this litter everywhere? Well, if everybody picked up all the litter they saw in front of them, there would be no litter everywhere. Okay. And I think it's like that with this. You know, I think Mark's doing a very, very inspirational thing. But here's a funny story about that that I don't think I've said online. When he sent me the recording of the phone call and I turned it into a video, it turned out to be 11 minutes, 11 seconds long. For those that know, know. And then somebody, and I haven't verified this, but somebody then sent me a message saying, the policeman's number that he that rang him, I think, I can't remember what it was, but if you add all the numbers up, it comes to 17. So who knows? I mean, this is a spiritual war. Things are yeah. a bit weird. And I think what you said about that story, you said about the helicopter and the boat is so important because we started this show talking about how demonic attacks and demons work through people and around people and, and physically in the world around. God works exactly the same way. You, you know, never look a gift horse in the mouth. When I when I did the talk in Edinburgh the other month, there was a massive Egyptian mural opposite the venue that hardly anybody that came to the talk had noticed. So I took everybody out of the room to go and look at it. All we have to do is pay attention. God is talking to you all the time. Your higher self is talking to you all the time. The demonic forces are always going to try and knock you off course. Just learn how to protect yourself and keep moving forward. I don't know if that's answered the question. Uh, what was it? No, it, it didn't matter because it's a great time filler. So thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> it's late at night i'm just i'm getting on one yeah no you're doing you're doing great here i'll i'll give you a break real quick i'm gonna i've been promising uh folks that i was going to release a video uh that i did for um some great patriots in our event and they played it at their event but nobody's not very many people seen it unless they were there it's called limit limitless behavior and failing forward it's not what you're used to hearing from me but um i hope it can help some people and grab some inspiration. So I'll probably play, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute or something here. But I promised I will have it. I was working on it when Mark came on. I will schedule it. It will be up on my Rumble channel at probably 8 a.m. in the morning. Actually, let's make it 8.30 since our prayer is at 8. So 8.30 in the morning uh, Pacific time tomorrow. So let me play a little bit of that. And then just so you know what 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 I've been talking about here a little bit. So I go over um, mindset. Um, I tell my one of my favorite stories about heavy oil, light oil right there. And then we're going to go into um, some examples and then something called failing forward, which is a huge passion of mine. Probably going to write a book on this. Um, and I have a little goofy illustrations to go go along with it. So, guys, that will be up tomorrow. Um, at 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 11.30 Eastern. If I'm calculating right, that would be 6.30 Mark's time. Very good. So um, something I did for um, Rise TV and their their event, and I thought I, I might as well get it out there. So, Well, you mean the Edge of Wonder guys? Yes. 
Oh, I love those guys. Did you know them? Yeah, yeah. You're talking about Jarrett, Greg, and Schumacher, and and Jaron. Who you're talking about? No, no. They were, Rise TV. That, I thought that was the name of the Edge of Wonder. They used to be on YouTube a few years ago. I don't think it's the same guys, but that's great. And if you need any help with the publishing, I've just set up a publishing company. Oh, oh after I write it, I will. I'll definitely because yeah. well, I have all the time in the world to do that for sure. No, I can help you write it very fast. I've got a system for writing books that's extremely yeah. quick. <laughs> it's called. And, it's called. What is it? Chat G. No, 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 no. Don't use that shit. <laughs> even even if you do use that shit, you have to rewrite it. Right, exactly. Oh man. I Mark, know a lot of a lot of ourselves are using that and making it's a been a ball today. Anything Is else it, you wanna you wanna let the peeps know before you go sleepy, sleepy nighty nighty? Well, I mean, I if most of your crowds in the States, I mean we're all in this all over the world. Um, but um just keep enjoy enjoy your life. Right. This is this is the key. You know, you've only ever had this present moment. Past is gone. Forget about it. The future doesn't exist yet. Just live in the present moment. Be kind to people. Be kind to yourself. Apply some of the knowledge that some people have, you know, gathered for you over the years and um, take care of yourself. You're going to we're going to get through this. And I honestly believe the best is yet to come. Uh, I really do. I can't say it any better. Let's end it on that. Everybody, thank you for being with us tonight. We appreciate you. We watch this over and over. There's so many nuggets that Mark dropped here. I think you, this is this is going to age well. My brother, thank you well. Love you very much. And folks, um, we're going to play our outro, Mark. And then if you want to hang on for the two minutes, three minutes after that, we can chat or you can just go to bed. I understand. Actually, I'm going to go. My daughter's uh, just arrived an hour ago. Oh, cool. I'm going to go and say hello. But thank you. Thank you to Robert and thank you to everybody watching. Awesome. God bless you all. Take God. care. And good night.